Well, this will probably be the most important video I've ever made concerning building an airplane, not just a Bearhawk. It's, uh, this is a little bit embarrassing. It's gonna be a little bit humbling to tell you this, but this is a lesson of understanding your tools. I could have just fixed the problem and gone on and not said anything about it. So I wanna take a look at some of the things that we've completed and I'm going to show you what we're gonna to have to do to correct this problem. Some people might say this is an overkill move. I don't think anything's an overkill move if you even have the slightest amount of doubt. Right now the wings are assembled, the struts are mounted, everything's bolted in place, everything's been torqued, everything is exactly where it needs to be in terms of angle of incidence, the dihedrals have been set on both sides at one degree. There's a previous video that discusses that. Control surfaces have been installed. All of the fasteners are cotter pinned in place. And all of the control surface cabling has been completed. Ailerons are set, tensioned. Elevator cables are set and tensioned. Rudder cables are set and tensioned. Even the trim system. Flaps as well. It's all there. So after having gone through all of that, and I've had people here helping me with that, and I certainly appreciate the help, but today, we're cutting it all out. So the AC4313 is the acceptable methods, techniques, and practices for building an airplane. Actually, it's for certified airplanes as well. So a lot of the same uh, practices are used for assembling certified airplanes that we use on experimentals. In fact, all of the materials used in the airplane, like the wood or the aluminum or the fabric, all of those things are in AC4313. Also including fasteners, the types of fasteners, the AN type of fasteners. These are not the fasteners you would buy at the hardware store. These are specific for aviation and for aircraft. And control surface rigging, uh, and that includes cables, cable eyes, uh, turnbuckles, and a technique called swaging. So swaging is the process of crimping a copper sleeve to the cable to form a cable eye. So for the Bearhawk, we're using 1 8 inch galvanized cable with zinc plated copper sleeve. So assembling a cable eye is really not all that difficult. We just simply take the end of the cable, we push it through the copper sleeve, make a loop, bring it back through, and it kind of looks like this. But how do we get it to stay on? Well, we use a crimping tool. Most cable eyes have a thimble that goes inside there. And we pull the cable tight around the thimble. And now we're ready to swage the copper sleeve.
it was now time to buy a tool to start building my control cables. Well, I went out and I found a tool that was at a great price and it seemed like a great deal. The description of the tool said that I could crimp copper sleeve onto 1 8 inch cable, which was exactly what I needed. So over the course of the past two and a half years, now and again, I would just build a cable when I needed it. I would build a rudder cable when I had the fuselage uh, uncovered and it was just easy to run my cables. When I was building the wings, I ran my aileron cables before I riveted the final skin. And that's taken me up to the point where I am today, where everything has been installed, tensioned with turnbuckles. I've got a control cable gauge that I can check the tension on all of the cables. Everything was perfect. And then I came across an article in Kit Planes Magazine called The Big Squeeze. If you have not read this article and you're building an airplane or you're just interested in this story in itself, you've got to read this article because it hit me like a ton of bricks when I got down to about three quarters of the way through the article where it talked about comparing a cheap swaging tool with a proper Nico press tool. And it was at that point I realized Nico press is the name of a manufacturer. It's not a method really, it's actually the tool company that makes a proper swaging tool for aviation. Here it is, Nico Press. The article also talked about what could happen if a swaging tool is not properly adjusted and does not crimp the copper sleeve appropriately. And it gave some examples of some failures on cables that simply just pulled right through. Here's an example of a cable I that I crimped I don't know when maybe a year or two ago and I want you to see how this cheap $40 tool made this swage now I want you to take a look at this crimp or this swage and I want you to see how evenly these crimps are how nice that came out And that came out of the result of using the proper tool. This is a Nico Press tool. Nico Press also supplies you with instructions on how to use their tool. I didn't get that with the $40 tool. Nico Press also gives you what's called a go, no go gauge. And that's so you can test to make sure that your crimp is a exactly the way it needs to be. Every crimp should be tested. I'm actually all right with all of this. Look, it's just a matter of taking a day or two to get these new cables pulled. I know what to do. It's not that big of a job. And the peace of mind that comes with it is just extraordinary. If one person benefits from this and it helps them, peace of mind and safety of doing it the right way, I think that's just part of the experimental aircraft building process. And so I'm not ashamed. I'm not upset about it. I wasn't happy about it in the beginning, but I'm more than happy to go back and do it the right way. So thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share this video with your friends, especially with people who are building airplanes, who are constructing control cables for their airplanes. They need to see this video.